Now we're going to learn a little bit about shape keys. Shape keys are a pretty cool method of um, animating and, and uh, distorting your mesh without the use of an armature, which we haven't really covered much about at all yet. Um, so probably the best way to think about shape keys is sort of a standard way of thinking about things in Blender. Um, you've got an object here and your object can take on a number of different shapes. You know, we could have, for instance, an object as simple as a cube or as complicated as a human face. Um, but either way, our object is basically just a store of data. So our object, for instance, will have um, data slots for materials that we can populate in there. We can put in multiple slots. An object can contain multiple materials. Uh, this object contains a material. And um, it can contain all kinds of other information as well. UV maps, for instance, that we've covered just a little bit. It can contain multiple UV maps. Well, one of the types of data that an object contains is, uh, for lack of a better word, just vertex position information. So, for instance, I can select this vertex here on the head and I can see its X, Y, and Z coordinates. And those change depending on which vertex I have selected. And um, we kind of start by operating under the assumption that that's just where those vertices are and if we move them then the data changes. But an object can actually hold multiple locations for a vertex. and those alternate locations are stored as shape keys. So if we go down here to our object data tab, you'll see we have vertex groups and we have slots for shape keys. So shape keys are a little funny. The first um, shape key that we create is always just called basis. So if we hit plus here, then we just have this basis shape key and the basis is different than any other shape key that we'll create in that it doesn't have a value that we dial in. Um, any other shape keys we create, for instance, I'll make key one here, you'll see it has more options down here. It's got a value, a uh, minimum range of zero by default, the maximum range of one, so I can dial in a value for that shape key here. Um, the basis doesn't have those options. That's because it is the default shape. It doesn't need a value. It's what the shape is when there is no other shape key or value specified. Um, so that's just kind of important to understand that you don't just create one shape key and then it's an alternate shape. The first shape key that you create is going to be your default. It's the basis. So you have to create two in order to make any changes. Um, so we've already created our second shape key and I'm going to give it a name. Sorry, shape. We'll call this smile underscore L because I'm going to make this character kind of I'm gonna use it for a facial expression I'm gonna have this character just kind of smile on the left side here I'll use my proportional editing and we'll see if we can make this look half decent and that's probably good and right now this character is kind of Mark Zuckerberg and just smiling with their mouth so we're going to squint the eyelid just a little bring the cheekbone up as if some of the other facial muscles are smiling as well okay and I'm doing all of this with the smile underscore L shape key selected in edit mode it's important that it's selected um, because otherwise I'm not changing it it has to be the selected shape key so if I tab out of edit mode you'll see that all my changes go away. And that's because smile underscore L has a value of zero. So if I dial that value up, then it gradually takes on the shapes that I specified in edit mode there. And the cool thing is you can animate this value. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Um, but before we actually get there, it's important to, to have a few words of caution right now. So with a shape key, you have a shape key selected and any changes that you make in edit mode go into that shape key. 
And it's important to understand that because on occasion I've actually come back to a project after a few weeks or even a few months and opened it up and started making some changes in edit mode, forgetting that I had a shape key selected somewhere that was not my basis shape key and thinking that I'm, I'm changing my model when in fact I'm actually just changing a shape key. And I'll show you in a, in a minute, we'll kind of mess this up on purpose, and I'll show you one method of correcting those sort of mistakes. Um, but that's just, it's important to know, and it's important to understand, like anything you get, anything you have selected in here is going to reflect in the shape key. So I've made a shape key here that's kind of fun. It's sort of a half smile. And if I want to animate this value, then all I have to do is just mouse over this value box here and tap I to keyframe, then advance my timeline marker to wherever I want the change to happen, and then change the value and tap I again with my mouse in the box. So you can see I've got two keyframes down on my timeline now, and if I hit play, then they gradually transition, and that's a pretty slow transition, so we'll speed that up moving the keyframe. There we go. So that's kind of fun. Um, that's how you animate the value of the value of a shape key. Alright, now another thing we're going to do is we are going to mirror the shape key. So if I want an identical shape key on the other side, I don't have to go back and try to create it. What I can do is dial the value up here and then with this little down arrow I can say let's make a new shape from the mix. So let's dial this value down and I now have key 2. Key 2 is identical to key 1 because I made a shape from the mix there and the mix refers to the value of the shape key. But we're gonna mirror this thing so let's call it smile underscore R and then this menu we've got we can also mirror the shape key so now if we pull that up you can see that it smiles on the right side and I can dial in a mix of the two and that looks a little silly, but uh, I can I can use them both simultaneously. Now I'm going to make an angry eyes shape key here. And actually, you know, maybe what I'll do is I will I'll do kind of a, a one eye up, sort of a Spock. Mr. Spock expression from Star Trek. So that's kind of fun. And, you know, maybe we'll draw the mouth down just a little here. Just a little here. All right. So I've made a Mr. Angry Eyes expression here. Um, but let's say during the course of that, I accidentally left a vertex in back selected. I do this, I make this sort of mistake all the time. Or let's. Uh, Let's do it on the ear just so it gets weird and let's we're gonna really deform it and whoops sure enough when I do my angry eyes I have some unwanted movement here stuff is happening that I don't want to happen so there's a really easy way to correct this it's kinda hard to search and Google for so I'll just sort of show you here I'm going to select everything roughly that I think was impacted by the mistake that I made then I'm going to go to my vertex menu and you'll see I've got this blend from shape option. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to assign these vertices positions from another shape key. So vertex, blend from shape, and I know that my basis shape key is still intact. So that gives me this little sub menu here. It's saying, do you want to blend from the basis? And I'm just going to say, yeah, let's blend a value of 1, 100% 1 from the basis. This little add checkbox is basically adding the value of the basis shape key to these new positions. I don't want to add, I want to replace. So I'm going to uncheck that and you can see that those now spring into the positions of the basis shape key. And I'm in edit mode so I've made that change. I fixed my angry eyes um, shape key now. And you can see that the ear and the the jaw are no longer affected over there. Basically, my my mistake has gone away. Um, so that's basically kind of how you use shape keys. 
it's really cool um, in Blender that you can you can animate almost any value box the way we just animated the value of the shape keys here. Um, you just mouse over it and tap I and then change the value somewhere else. And there are a few exceptions. There are value boxes that can't be animated, but uh, that is a really, really powerful tool for animating and, and for um, basically manipulating your data, your object data, the way that you want it manipulated. So it's a, it's a cool tool. I hope this is helpful, and have a great day.